Alright then gang, so in this lesson we're going to build our first live wire component which we can then drop into the welcome view. So first of all let's create this component and then we'll talk about how a live wire component actually works. Now to create a live wire component we can open the terminal and we're just going to type php artisan make and then a colon and then live wire. We also need to give this component a name and I'm going to just call it book list and then we can press enter. Now when we do this, Livewire should make the component for us by generating two different files. The first one is a blade view for the component which gets put into a new Livewire folder inside the views directory. And if we take a look at that, we can see that it's just a very basic template at the moment with this little random quote inside it, which is quite nice. So this is where we'll be making the template for the component shortly. The other file is a PHP class, which you can find inside the app folder up here, again inside a new Livewire folder. And you can see the name of this file is the name that we gave the component, but in Pascal case instead of kebab case. Anyway, inside this file, We've got a PHP class called booklist, which extends the Livewire component class. And this booklist component class contains a single function called render, which returns the component view. Now inside this class, we can add other public functions and property, which we will see later on. And those functions and properties can then be accessed directly from inside the component view. And this is how Livewire components are built. We have a blade view file for the component template and then a component class for all the component logic. And together, these two files work hand in hand to help us create dynamic and interactive UI components like maybe a search bar or a web form. So the component class handles all the backend logic like fetching data or validating input and responding to user events. And the component blade view handles what a user sees in the browser and how they can interact with it. So we'll see more about how these two things work together shortly. But to begin with, I want to just output this new book list component in the welcome view. To do that, we need to open the welcome view itself. And then somewhere inside it, we open up some angle brackets and we type live wire then a colon, and then whatever the component name is, which in our case is book hyphen list. And that is it. That's all we need to do to output a live wire component. We make a tag which starts with live wire, then the colon, and then the name of the component. So now the template for this view is going to get dropped right here into this welcome view. Now at the moment, that component template is pretty bare. So let's just add in a little bit more HTML so we can actually see something on the page and what I'm going to do is just paste this in right here So we've got a div and within that a header which contains another div then a h2 and then below that a paragraph with a subtitle inside it So it's still a very simple template But at least we should see this content now on the page when we view it in a browser And by the way, you might notice I'm using some tailwind classes right here to style these elements and that's because current versions of Laravel include Tailwind in the setup process as standard. Anyway, let's try viewing this now in the browser. All right, so yeah, that works. Now we can see this component template right here. So then we have made a live wire component now and we're outputting that component inside the welcome view. Now the way this works under the hood is that when the welcome view gets rendered and Laravel sees this live wire component, it knows that we're trying to output a live wire component because we start this thing right here with the word live wire. So Laravel then locates the component class based on this name right here, which it finds inside the app folder and then inside the live wire folder. And then the render method for this class gets fired and that tells Laravel which view to return and display. And by default, Laravel expects to find that view inside the Livewire folder within the views directory. So it finds that view and it injects it into wherever the component was nested. In this case, that's right inside the welcome view. Right, so now we know how to make a component and how to output that component template, but currently we've not really added any additional live wire functionality. This component could just be a regular blade view and the end result would be the same. But when we use a live wire component, we get access to a bunch of extra features. And one of those features is the ability to make public properties within the component class, which are then automatically available to us within the component view. For example, I could come to the class file and make a public property called name and I could set that equal to a string like Mario. And now out of the box, this property called name is available to use within the component view. And this has to be public, by the way, if you want to give the view access to this property. 
Okay, so back in the component view, I can just reference the value like I would any other value in Blade by using the double curly braces and then the variable name, which is dollar sign name. All right, so yeah, we can see that name value right here now in the browser, awesome. And also notice, we didn't need to pass that value directly into the view when we returned it down here, like we normally would have to when we don't use LiveWire. We just make the property public within the class and it automatically becomes available within the view. And this really simplifies the state management within components because when the values of these properties change on the server, that change then gets reflected in the template within the browser. Now, we can also pass data directly into the view as well as we normally would in a Laravel application by using a second argument in this view function, which is an array. And then each key value pair in this array would also get passed into the view as well. A good example of when I might do this is when I'm fetching data from the database using a model like the book model that I've got. For example, to do that, I could make a key name of books and then I could set the value of that to be book, which is the data model for the books table, and then just use the all method on that to fetch all the book records. And now this books value also gets passed into the component view. So we can make values available to the view in both of these two different ways, by using public properties within the class or by passing the value directly within the view function itself. There are differences which we'll come across during the rest of this course. But for now, let's try outputting this books data now in the component. So then what I'm going to do is come beneath this header right here and I will create a UL with a class of list. These classes that I add to the template, by the way, they're already created in app.css. So it's just so they look a little nicer in the browser when we come to view it. Anyway, now we have access to that books list and we want to cycle through them to output a little bit of template for each one. So we can use for each, which is a blade directive. So we say at for each and then inside parentheses, we can say dollar sign books, which is what we're iterating. And we refer to each one as a book. Okay. And then we'll end this down here by saying at end for each. Okay then, so inside here now, we're gonna do an li tag for each book. And then inside the li tag, I wanna output the book title, the book author, and the book rating. So what I'm gonna do is just copy this little bit of template from my course files and paste it in right here. And you can see we've got an h3 for the book title, an h4 for the book author, and a paragraph tag down here for the book rating. These were all the fields on our book model. All right, so if we go back to the, not the models, if we go down to the database folder and then we go into migrations and go to the book one, you can see the different fields right here, title, author, and rating. They're what we're outputting to the template, okay? Now, one more thing. When we cycle through some data like this in a live wire component, for each parent element inside this, we should always pass a key directive. And the way we do that is by saying, wire, which is the live wire kind of default directive. It comes before most things and then a colon and then we say key and we set that equal to some kind of unique value for each book. Now each book has an ID so we can output that by using double curly braces and then dollar sign book and then accessing the ID field like so. So this is so LiveWire can keep track of the different data items inside our template. And this is especially important for when you're doing things like reordering these in the browser, just so LiveWire can keep track of what's what, okay? So then, now let's save that and preview this in the browser. And now in a browser, we can see all the books data as well, awesome. And by the way, these all look styled because I already created the app.css file, which is hooked up to that welcome view. The styling is nothing to do with LiveWire itself. But anyway, now we know how to make a LiveWire component, how to nest that component within another view, and how to use public properties to make data available to that component. In the next lesson, we'll look at how LiveWire allows us to react to user events in the browser, like click events, by using component actions.